And let's talk about data testing. So this is data quality meetup. And the idea is for us to really understand how can we manage data reliability better as, a te as teams and companies. And one of the big topics in data reliability is obviously data testing. How can we make sure that the data that we produce for our stakeholders, for our teams, is of high quality? And how do we not screw up our business? I personally had some really horror stories with data testing at Lyft, where I had to ship hot fixes at 4 a.m. as a data engineer on call. And not having the right process and tools for data testing let me make some really subtle changes to SQL that ended up corrupting hundreds of data sets downstream and essentially rendering analytics unusable for the entire day. So that's why data testing is important. And that's why I'm excited to talk about it. So I'm going to talk about the basic principles behind data testing. What are the good ideas that we can implement? Uh, I'm going to talk about the different workflows we can embed data testing in, and also what kind of tests um, we can run. What are the pros and cons of different testing methodologies? And finally, what are the tools that we can use for testing our data? So first, we have to make sure that data testing is embedded in the existing workflows. It doesn't help if some random tool checks your data and you'll learn about it at some point without actually uh, integrating those tests into the workflow of real analysts and engineers. Two, we have to automate everything. So if the tests are requiring users to actually run them every time, then there's a high chance that someone at some point will not run them and some bad uh, issues will slip through. So the less you're reliant on humans to run something, the better. And three, cutting the noise. So we are dealing today with really unprecedented complexity in terms of data sets and pipelines. And so the more tests we're implementing there, the more noise we'll have like false positives and false negatives. And so it's really important that we constantly evaluate our testing techniques and making sure that we have the right signal to noise ratio. So the first workflow I'd like to talk about is production. So in production, we have some data which is computed. And the goal is to catch issues as early and upstream as possible. By upstream, we mean before the data and potentially corrupted data propagates to downstream consumer services or pipelines. So the workflows are very simple. We can run ETL batch. We can run a test after the data is computed. And then if the test passes, we publish these data to production. If the tests don't pass, then we notify the owners of this pipeline and then let them investigate it before publishing the data. That way, you don't publish data which is wrong. So what kind of tests we can run in production? First, we can run assertions, which are really uh, hard rules, hard business assumptions that you can explicitly validate. And second is metrics monitoring. So. Metric monitoring allows us to look at the data, not at the individual values, but at the metric level. Assertions are really helpful when you're trying to check data on a value level. For example, you may have a email field in your table, and you want to make sure that that field conforms to the format that your downstream consumer systems expect. The second type of assertions you can run are integrity checks, making sure that your primary key, for example, user ID, is unique and not null. You can also run balance checks. For example, if you have a table with transactions and then you aggregate them into some kind of financial report, you want to make sure that the total revenue in your transactions table equals your total revenue once you roll the financial report. And to execute those assertions, you have basically two main paths. So one, it's really great if the ETL tool that you're running uh, already includes the assertion framework um, out of the box. So for example, new generation ETL tools such as DBT and Dexter that we, by the way, are going to hear about very soon include um, the data assertion frameworks out of the box. So you don't actually need to type in SQL. You can just define tests really easily using a custom the main specific language. And then you can also use standalone frameworks such as Great Expectations for executing checks in SQL or DQ for Spark. Those are all open source um, platforms. 
So the second types of checks that I mentioned is metric monitoring. So let's say we are appending a given number of rows to uh, some table every day whenever ETL runs. And the number of rows appended is quite noisy, right? Because you have different seasonality in your business, you have trend, you have natural noise. And nevertheless, we want to make sure that the number of rows appended to a data set is normal, right? The problem here is that if we just apply the static thresholds, that wouldn't do much good because the thresholds can be uh, really noisy. They won't catch, they can be either too sensitive or too noisy. And so why don't we apply a little bit of machine learning and construct some boundaries of what is a normal behavior of a metric and then even tune this boundary to be of desired sensitivity to make sure that you're not getting too many alerts or too few. So to run this kind of um, metric monitoring, you have you can use multiple tools. So one open source tool that is really popular is called Profit. This is a um, package by Facebook that has Python and R interface, which is great for fitting time series models. Another option is using a feature that we built at Datafold called Alerting. You can start using it for free. So we talked about production, but what about development? So in development, our goal is to do no harm, meaning we don't want to break things that work. And the workflow is very simple, right? We build and backfill some kind of uh, table or pipeline. We then run the tests. If the tests pass, we can uh, have someone review our code and deploy it. If the, tests, if the tests don't pass, then we investigate and repeat the cycle again. So what kind of tests we can run in development? First, we can, of course, execute the same um, assertions, just like in production. And um, tools like dbt, by the way, allow you to do it really, really seamlessly, even in CI process, which is great. The second type of tooling that I'd like to talk about is called data diff. Data diff, you may wonder what it is. Um, it helps you understand the differences between the data sets, for example, in production or in development. Essentially, it's like git diff, but for data. And data diff tools can help you understand the differences both on the value level between, let's say, production data set and development data set, but also on a distribution level so that you can understand when making a change in your SQL code or other code that produces or transforms your data, what is going to be the impact on the data set produced. And so the best thing with both um, tests, assertions, and data diff is if you integrate it into some sort of CI process in GitHub, GitLab, or other version control tool. Because then on every pull request, you can have all the information ready for you for code review and accelerate your deploy cycle. So in terms of the diff tools, there are a couple of open source options. So dbt already includes a macro called dbt audit helper. It's a CLI tool. Big Diffy by Spotify, they built also a CLI tool that is capable of handling really large data sets. And if you're looking for a graphical user interface for your diff and a little bit more interactivity, Datafall also has uh, a diff tool that you, again, can start using for free. So to wrap up, basically, data tests are very important. And it's really critical to embed them into your workflows. Today, we covered both development and production workflows. And we talked about how we can implement them in, in both. So in development, it's typically uh, that will trigger data tests on every commit or pull request. And we would do assertions and data diff. In production, we would trigger them typically in ETL orchestrator and use assertions or metric monitoring. So that's data tests. And I'm always happy to chat about this topic. So feel free to ping me, glabadatafold.com, if you want to continue the conversation.